What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Things are going extremely well in Yang World. Donations for Q3, he's crushing it. A big study came out earlier this week talking about 48% of Americans now supporting the idea of a UBI. So things are definitely looking up with Yang. Yang is currently um, engaged in a more aggressive, we'll, we won't call it an attack, we'll just say that he's, he's out right now on his campaign to let everyone know that not only is he serious, but he's got more effective policies than Elizabeth Warren. Now he's just going right for it. You know, we, we talked earlier on about, you know, maybe he's not being aggressive enough. What's going on? What's his strategy? Um, you know, he's seeming a little gimmicky. And this week, he has just really stepped things up. Rather than focusing on Trump, which he had you know, previously been doing, he's going right at Warren, which I think is great because Warren is in a vulnerable position. She's rising. So she's still being introduced to a lot of people who probably hadn't really been super familiar with her. Recently talked about Bernie Sanders' health scare, and I just saw just a little bit ago that it was confirmed that he actually had a heart attack. So, you know, thoughts and prayers to Bernie and his family, and, and they said he's in good spirits and he seems to be doing fine. But just that, that news being confirmed by his campaign is just it's not helping the field out any, and it's definitely going to start to maybe turn a few people away from the Sanders camp. Not to mention Biden is involved in the whole investigation that um, the, the impeachment proceedings with Trump. So who knows where that's going to take him. So right now, Yang chose the right road to just go straight to Warren. What we're going to talk about today, like I said, is this uh, basically this article out of Fox Business. This week, Warren um, announced a, uh, an aggressive tax on lobbyists. I'm not going to read the article. There's quite a few different resources I'm going to be using for this video. So I'm going to be jumping around quite a bit. But I'll link to everything, and if you guys want to follow along, feel free. I, again, I just love the strong language. He's not sugarcoating. He's letting you know, look, she can say whatever she wants to do, but it's just not going to work. In, in practice, it's not going to happen. Andrew Yang believes that the financial impact of, the lobbyists, of lobbying has on politics and government should be curtailed, but the Democratic presidential candidate doesn't think that merely taxing lobbyists, lobbyists will have much of an impact proposing a deeper attack on the foundation of the lobbying industry. So I just want to hop right over here into um, Warren's plan. So this is out of The Hill. The Hill is doing a fantastic job right now in this election cycle covering everything, especially this, this side of the aisle. The summary of, of, the, uh, of Warren's plan unveiled Wednesday morning calls for a 35% tax rate on annual lobbying expend expenditures between 500000 and $1 million. 60% for expenditures between $1 million and $5 million, and 75% on all lobbying costs over $5 million. She referenced the Chamber of Commerce, the top lobbying spender in her proposal. The group spent more than $40.6 million in the first two quarters of 2019, and just under $95 million for all of 2018. Other groups that spent more than $10 million in the first two quarters of 2019 include the NRA. Obviously, they had a lot to, to lobby about. Um, National Association of Realtors, Pharmaceutical Research and uh, Manufacturers of America, Blue Cross Blue Shield, American Hospital Association, American Medical Association, um, according to the Center for Response Politics. So just to let you guys know why things aren't getting done in certain areas of your life, that, that, that's the reason, man. These, these lobbyists are going hard. And again, Yang has rightfully called this out. This is, this is not corruption. This is the system that we have. The, lobbying is a job. It's not like you go down to uh, you go to a, a bar and you ask for a lobbyist and they take you to the back room. And you got to talk. No, no. You just go down and you can apply for a job as a lobbyist. It's a normal thing. It's perfectly commonplace in, in American politics. That's just what we do. We have lobbyists. They, they, they make friends. They encourage people to do things that they want and their, uh, their, the companies that they work for benefit. So via his social media channels on Thursday morning, Yang said he needs more to be done. We need more to be done than simply slapping the wrists of lobbying with a tax. On uh, Warren's proposal, Yang tweeted that given the exponential return lobbyists receive for their money, that Warren's plan of a tax of 35 to 75 percent will do next to nothing. He actually cites this uh, this article, the rate of return on lobbying, which is a fantastic read. Again, I'll be linking all this stuff down in the description below. But basically, their research concludes that just basically explains to you guys why. Um, how this happens, you know, we, we're trying to get some legislation passed and as a result there's a bunch of writers thrown on there. These writers essentially become the little policies, the changes that basically make these companies a ton of money and this is where it all pays off. Uh, the new law started life as a laudable effort to get rid of a $5 billion 
a year tax subsidy for exporters of the European Union for exporters that the European Union had complained about and the World Trade Organization had deemed illegal. But it's ended up as a 650 page horror that adds endless complexities to the tax code and doles out favors to a cornucopia of special interests from tobacco farmers to bow and arrow makers. I'm a lobbyist for a, a computer technology company and we got a special software um, that teaches kids, I don't know, something, it teaches them something about finance, hypothetically. And you know, my job is to go on down to the uh, congressman and say, look man, you guys really need to implement these school programs and we got this software that will help you to do what you need to do. So um, my company makes a ton of money as a result of my lobbying efforts and uh, you know, we get tremendously wealthy, a policy change, and then someone of benefiting financially in a major way. Back to the article. Although it did eliminate the original subsidy, the act took the name of a job creation bill as a euphemism for the handouts distributed to the industries that pestered for them. An academic study that compared companies' lobbying costs to the benefits they received from the law concluded that the returns of lobby lobbying were between 22,000 percent in that particular case. So $220 of tax breaks or subsidies for every dollar spent lobbying. John McCain called the bill, no lobbyists left behind. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that amazing? Imagine in any, in any other facet of life getting a 22,000 percent return. And that's what they're saying. They're saying They'll gladly spend millions of dollars on lobbying because it's worth it. Spend millions and they get back billions. Sounds like a pretty good trade-off to me. It's not a bad gig. Again, not illegal. You know what I mean? This is, they're playing by the rules. They're not violating any, any laws or any rules. This is, this is the game. This is the game. This requires an active role from the people. Like, it's always going to come back to that, which is so important. Spitting all over the place. So important that if the people don't uh, take any part in this, this is all for naught, man. Then you got a thousand bucks a month and great. We'll continue to be treated the way we've been treated, but at least he gave us an opportunity. He hops in, of course, a mild tax would just make lobbying slightly more expensive. Again, 22,000%, not that bad. So you would either need to make the tax greater than 100,000% or 1,000 times or prohibit lobbying entirely or you could flood the system with people and with people powered money and tie legislators to the public he links of course to democracy dollars we've talked about democracy dollars it's a fantastic policy proposed by the great andrew yang give every american a hundred dollars to contribute to a political campaign basically his idea is not only to uh, wash out the money out of politics at a ratio of four to one which is important because yes, it's go it is going to make it more expensive. So if they want to continue lobbying at the rate they've been currently, it's going to be more expensive. But the other thing that it does is it forces a public official to uh, to basically look away from his own constituents. Okay, so if we have a hundred thousand people in there at a thousand dollars, that's ten million dollars. So if we got ten million dollars across the board, ten million from the the tobacco company, ten million from the people. He's got to look at the people and say, all right, well, I got to go with them because these are votes. This is not just money. Um, this is the extreme difference that we have between what Yang's proposing versus the way things would work if we're just relying on tax money. And if the money was even, if it's just a one-to-one -one ratio, that's not enough. We need an actively engaged uh, public, and we just don't, we don't have that. That means you know what's going on, okay? That means you're asking for policies, and then you're following up with your representative to find out whether or not these things are happening, or if they're not happening, why they're not happening. Term limits is another issue in Yang's scope on Thursday, noting that special interests could and should be limited through term limits. The citizens in this country need to become our most powerful lobbyists. Voting is not enough to hold legislators to task because of incumbency in the two-party duopoly. The voice of the people is now drowned out by corporate money and interests. That is what we must reverse. We need some fresh ideas. And you're not going to get them with the same people being in office for 25, 30 years. It's just not going to happen. One way to free up legislators from corporate interests is term limits. Right now, legislators spend decades in D.C. trying to stay in power. With term limits, you would, have, you would be free to vote on behalf of your constituents because you're returning home soon anyway. Imagine that, man. You go and do a bad job in Washington, D.C., and then you actually have to go back home. Like, you can't just hide out in D.C. forever and act like you're not from that home state. You might have to come back and answer some questions. And I think, you know, with a more engaged public, probably be for the best, man. Twelve years. I think you said twelve years. Twelve years, man. Twelve years ain't bad. That's, you're going to have a nice chunk of change. Again, you've made some friends. You're going to be okay. Twelve years is plenty. Congressmen should not be a, a lifelong career. We're like, I'm, I'm with it. 
let's just talk about his goals on the on the limiting of the term limits. Keep legislators from becoming entrenched in a political class. Two, keep legislators focused on solving problems instead of getting reelected. And three, get new ideas into Congress regularly. You spend now all that time in DC, you really, you don't know the people of your hometown anymore. And you become separated from the people who, who got you where you are. Yeah, it's easy to lose track of things. And then you, you know, you got a new master. So um, I, I like where he's going. I like the way he's thinking. Again, it's about the way he's thinking. Um, he's more aggressive, he's more progressive. And I love the fact that he's going straight at Warren because um, at this point, that's the right target. The analogy we have, there's no reason to spend as much time in D.C. as politicians do. They could spend way more time at home and check. They're scared to go home. It's not that they have to be there. They are terrified. They don't want to go home. People know what they're doing. There's, like Everybody's not engaged. Everybody's not aware. But the few people who are, are waiting for these people to come home. Yang is now targeting Senator Warren, and for good reason. She is the next most obvious target. Sanders is obviously taking a few days off trail. Um, Biden is currently wrapped up in this Trump investigation. Warren, she's rising. Yang is able to just simply focus on her policies and show that he's just going further than her. Like, not only is he going further, but his policies are doing things that hers don't do. You know, we talked before about how her wealth tax doesn't address the fact that, uh, you know, people are going to try to skirt those taxes as much as possible. Yang's does. And not only does he address that, but he also tries to double back and say, well, this is going to incentivize a certain behavior that we want to get out of the middle class. Yang isn't as much concerned about limiting the amount of money that people spend on lobbying. He's more interested in having a more engaged public. Then he's going to make sure that the more engaged public is given the political capital that they're going to need to actually make sure that their, uh, that their voices are heard. So Yang is looking at everything from a multifaceted point of view. What Warren is always proposing is just the same old, same old. You know, we get a bunch of tax dollars, but if people aren't engaged, it doesn't matter. If they just have to spend more money to get their policies passed, then so be it, because their returns are exponential. He's just, he's just showing why he's better, and I just hope he continues to be aggressive. He's doing it kindly, but uh, at the same time, I think... I think Warren is going to start to get a little irritated that he keeps attaching his name to hers. I hope he doesn't let up. With that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.